Welcome to Heart of a Giant Webinars. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of our podcast. Um, we are so delighted today to be joined by one of our very own. We are here with Lewis Howe, who is our community, one of our community coordinators here at the Heart of a Giant Foundation. And today he is going to be talking to us about his own journey towards um, optimal health and wellness. And we're going to be getting into a conversation about how it is that one lives with hypertension and how you manage it to the point that it actually doesn't even have to be an issue anymore. So um, without too much preamble, I am very excited to call up Lewis. Hi, Lewis. And Morning, for us Al. to How begin this today? conversation. I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just fine. I, uh, I just got back from a wonderful vacation visiting my oldest son down in North Carolina. Lovely. And, um, just uh, had a marvelous time. Miss my kids tremendously, but it's uh, yeah. it's good to see them. And I'm very proud of the work he's doing. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. So you were there for the weekend? Um, I was actually there for four days, so a little longer okay. than a weekend. And, nice. Uh, yep, got to meet his friends down there and um, got to see the work he's doing with a, a auto racing team. And, um, and then I got to drive back and make sure that I eat uh, all the right things while I was on the road. So, uh, <laughs> and how did you I, do? How, how did that go? Well, as I, uh, mentioned to you earlier, um, I, I did gain four pounds, but, um, the good news is that this morning I weighed myself and two of those pounds come off. So I, uh, I you see that. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, tr and the trick is, and we can talk about this in greater detail is that I didn't get too obsessive or hung up over what I was eating and what I was not eating. It was mm -hmm. mainly uh, limiting between meals, portion control, all the stuff you normally do. Yeah. And allowing myself to have a little bit of holiday-related, um, not cheating so much, but being less rigid. and uh, Indulgence. Exactly. So that was great. And now I'm home and I have to go back to the supermarket and buy the, the yogurts and the salads that I was eating before. <laughs> okay, so... Let's take a step back and just explain to the audience what this is all about, why it is that we are now, you know, choosing yogurts and salads over, I, I don't know, pizza and fried rice, you know, and all the rest of it. Yep. Maybe you can just give us a little bit of background to your journey, you know, and, and, and where you find yourself now. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, thanks again, Al, for uh, staging this uh, podcast. I hope it's helpful to those who are tuning in. Um, I started working for the Heart of a Giant Foundation about two years ago, and mm -hmm. the irony for me was that I wasn't diagnosed with hypertension until about three months uh, prior to this broadcast. Mm -hmm. So I was doing all this work trying to educate others on the importance of uh, healthy heart living, and all of a sudden I became a patient myself when my doctor <laughs> uh, diagnosed me back in April. So that was very humbling. And it was uh, the, the term I guess people use is wake up call. Um, I am in my late fifties. I work full time in addition uh, to my work with Heart of a Giant. So um, I do have a busy lifestyle, but not necessarily an active one in the way that people need to be. So uh, since that diagnosis, it occurred to me that uh, my regular diet of uh, Chinese food and, and takeout was going to have to be uh, rectified. And, mm. um, so I have, um, been consulting with a nutritionist. I have been, uh, meeting with my therapist and I have been doing the things that I've been told that I had to do for the past, you know, 20 years or so would never get around to. Mm. And, um, so the good news is even though I gained four pounds while I was away, I had lost 10 before I went away. So I'm still Perfect. in the aggregate, uh, I'm in the plus side. I do need to lose about 20 to 25 pounds more over the next year. And, okay. um, I do need to be more rigid in my exercise regimen. I did do mm. a lot of walk when I was down South. I think my son made sure that he wanted his dad to be out there and being ambulatory. And, uh, so he saw to that, uh, it's difficult when you're in the car all the time. Yeah. But the important thing is that you stick with it and don't get discouraged if you don't get immediate results. Absolutely. Uh, the, the other piece was that, um, my blood pressure, as you would expect was 
very high back in the spring. Uh, I believe it was around um, 142 over 90, uh, which is mm-hmm. just unacceptably that's, high for that's high. my age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but luckily, um, the folks at Heart of a Giant have provided me with this uh, home blood pressure monitoring kit, uh, which I use daily when I'm here. And uh, I've done very well in bringing it down and maintaining. Uh, my first number is still higher than it should be. It usually hits around 136 or 137. Uh, but the lower number has been as low as 77 and regularly between 81 and 83. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah. That's really good to hear. Lewis, you, you mentioned that, you know, the lifestyle changes that you're putting in place now are obviously things that you had been told to do for 20 years or however long. Mm-hmm. What made this wake up call the wake up call? You know, that's a very good question. And, uh, you do a little soul searching at a time like that. And mm-hmm. um, I think it's partially that, um, as I said, uh, I have uh, three sons and, um, you know, I want to make sure that they grow up. I, I have my kids pretty late in life. Um, mm-hmm. my, my baby is only 13 and I'm 58 and I'm often mistaken for his grandfather. And, <laughs> uh, and he thinks that's funny. But, um, you know, I want to be around uh, when he becomes an adult, uh, to, to be able to move him into college and to, you know, meet the people he's working with after he's grown. And, um, I realized that, you know, I'm 58 now and people have been telling me since I was in my thirties that I had to shape up. Now I did give up cigarettes when I was 34. Mm. Uh, and that was an important step. Mm-hmm. And I gave up alcohol when I was 49, um, out of necessity. And, um, so I kept fighting these changes, trying to justify in my head, well, I still have to do something fun, you know? Mm. And, um, but ultimately, you know, if you keep eating, uh, the wrong foods and too much, of, mm. uh, you know, I, I have noticed as I get older that I'm going to more funerals and fewer weddings. Um, I have friends who have passed away young. And I, the ones that I have actually seen recently that I went to college with, yeah. um, my, my best friend, I was visiting on my way down to North Carolina and he's wearing a heart monitor. Um, oh dear. And, he's the same age, and he's the same age as me. Uh, and that was, uh, something that makes you really sit up and take notice. When the doctor made this particular diagnosis, I said to myself, well, you know, do I really want to continue down this path and perhaps become you know, a burden to my children in my sixties because, mm. yeah, you know, I won't be able to take care of myself. Um, I don't want that. I want to be able to keep working. I want to be able to, uh, live independently. Mm. Uh, you know, years ago I, I had a job with, um, the state department of public health here in Massachusetts. And mm-hmm. one of the programs I ran was uh, healthy aging and, oh. um, and so I, I actually presented before the National Council on Aging at a conference one time about healthy lifestyles and uh, preventing falling and things of that nature. And um, as I've grown older, I think, oh, my goodness, now I'm, I'm at that age. I have to start listening to the advice that I gave. And uh, I finally threw out the T-shirt I had from that program from 2007 because it was full of holes and everything else and had <laughs> held up over the years. Uh, and I don't think the phone number on the back was active anymore, but, um, so I came to realize that I, I'm a senior now and, mm. uh, and even though this podcast is not directed towards any one age group, um, as adults get older and men especially aren't known for looking after ourselves unless we're scared. Um, yeah, I got a little bit scared when the doctor said this, um, I thought about mm-hmm. strokes, I thought about yeah. heart attacks. Um, and just general obesity and, um, you know, being tired, climbing the stairs is just, I'm tired of that. Um, so I want to stave off that part of my life as much as possible because there'll be times when I'll be, uh, carrying the laundry up the stairs and I'll think, well, you're 58 now and you can't do this. What's going to happen when you're 70? Oh, and wow. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. really, it makes it's you stop. So if we can prevent, um, bad health comes. A bad health outcomes, excuse me, uh, or stave them off as long as possible. Uh, we can allow not just ourselves, but the people who are tuning in and the people who work with Heart of a Giant to 
um, put off um, old age as long as possible. Yeah, and and to be able to maintain, you know, fun and healthy relationships with the people around them, because as you say, you know, once someone who you love, uh, unfortunately, if they do succumb to a stroke or or other, you know, health related issue, it obviously has an impact on more than just the individual, you know, so it's something that you do for others um, almost as much as you do it for yourself. Yeah, my uh, I wrote my my most recent uh, blog post, which um, you've seen, talks about wanting to stay healthy for my kids. And yeah. Now I'm thinking about someday they're going to have kids too. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, and so I want to be a cool grandpa who's around and not you know sitting with an oxygen tank or something. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm being somewhat facetious, but. Um, I, I know from visiting my oldest son that if I want to have a, a relationship with him moving forward, I'm going to have to travel, um, you know, the 600 miles to where he's living. He's not coming back to Boston. Oh, uh, you know, he's I, he'll visit at Christmas, but that's of course, yeah. Uh, but it, you know, that's where he's going to be. Um, my middle son, who is um, in university um, studying literature, uh, he wants to be a college professor. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. So he wants to go to Europe and get his master's and you know, he's got all these wonderful big dreams and ambitions. And I want to be there to support that, you know, not just financially, but also, you know, to be there for them. Absolutely. Um, incidentally, my, uh, my middle son, uh, read my last blog post that I did for you and he gave it an approval. So uh, I must be <laughs> Please. Ask. if he says it's good, it must be good. Um, <laughs> and then as I mentioned, my, my little one is, um, only in middle school. Um, but he's got a promising future as an athlete. He's a soccer player on yeah. the state Olympic team for his age group. And um, so if he winds up playing collegiately or beyond, um, I want to be the proud dad in the stands, you know, waving him on. Um, and I'm not going to be able to do that if um, if I'm dead, one, and or if I'm uh, in a nursing home somewhere. And I had had the greatest of health in my younger days anyway. So hmm. I think, you know, better late than never was the message I'd convey to our heart of a giant folks. And um, it's kind of nice that I'm in a position working for the foundation where I'm able to convey this message and also talk about how it's affected me. So I do hope when people um, go on our website and read what I've written about this, that they do provide feedback as to what they've experienced or ideas they have for healthy living as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and we encourage that, you know, people can reach out. You can email Lewis directly. Um, we can, we'll put up his email address or you can get in touch with me or any of us at the, at the foundation if you want to share or if you want to get, you know, some of the materials, tips and information that we have because really the whole mission is about empowering people to take control of their health and their blood pressure in particular so that you can live a long, happy, healthy um, life. So I wanted to ask you, you mentioned you're working with a nutritionist as well as yes. a therapist. What would you say has been the role or the impact of your mental health on your overall physical health and on your blood pressure in particular? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, yeah, I've lived with um, uh, mental health conditions for most of my life. Uh, they weren't diagnosed until adulthood, which is just how things were back in those days. Um, but um, yeah, I do live with uh, some anxiety and stress disorders, which, as you might imagine, would compound my desire to take comfort in uh, bad behavior. Uh, and again, for a long time, it was cigarettes, and then it was alcohol. And in the last decade or so, it became Chinese food um, and, uh, you know, Coke and pizza in the afternoon between meals. I noticed not only was my weight uh, going up, but my overall uh, fatigue was just mm. setting in on a regular basis. And so when I would go see my therapist, uh, I have a prescriber and I had a behavioral therapist who unfortunately passed away last year. Because he okay. wouldn't give up the cigarettes, and uh, a great guy uh, helped me through a lot, and I miss him terribly. 
but when I would go visit them, uh, they were always after me to lose weight, exercise, all the usual things. And I would just sort of pawn it off because I said, well, the only way for me to control my mental health is to take comfort in you know, what mm-hmm. else I'm doing. And of course, that was a lie to myself. That was a convenient story that I could tell. And now I realize um, that by not um, self-sabotaging or whatever the term is that I want to use, by by not um, eating too much salt and too much sugar and uh, giving myself a just sort of a constant sense of, I, I don't know, I guess it would be like the Elvis Presley syndrome. You know, they say, say Elvis, uh, you know, when he was unhappy, he would eat lots of biscuits and gravy. Um, yeah. And... And of course, eventually it killed him at a young age. Mm. But, um, you know, I used to take comfort in that sort of thing. And it was a way for me to deal with my, um, my mental illness. And luckily, um, my prescriber has found the right combination of meds and the right amounts of them that I feel stable most of the time. Good. Uh, well, I still have my moments, but, you know, for the most part, they're few and far between and don't last as long. And, um, and then my behavioral therapist was just a gem in that we would sit and talk and it would be almost like a regular conversation like you and I are having now. It wouldn't be that sort of, you know, therapist talking down to the patient type thing. Mm. So, uh, I was very blessed about that. And I also had, um, uh, a minister, uh, who I used to speak with, uh, a lot and she was fantastic. And uh, she kind of helped me on that path to getting help in the first place. So, you know, I recognize that for one thing, if I'm going to manage my mental health, my physical health has to be better than it is because Mm -hmm. I was looking at it backwards all those years thinking, well, I, I can't afford to take care of my physical health. My mental health comes first, but they're inextricably linked. And, um, so now I realize that if I feel better physically, I'll also feel better mentally. And it's important because, um, if I may talk about my day job for just a second, it's, um, mm-hmm. it's a very challenging field. I, um, uh, I work with inmates in the county jail system in Massachusetts to, um, try to help them with their mental health and substance abuse issues and then mm-hmm. help them transition to the community when they get released. Um, as you might imagine, the outcomes are not always optimal, um, but that doesn't mean we stop trying. So at any time I have between 20 and 30 guys in my caseload and, Mm -hmm. um, some of them keep, uh, you know, that they have difficulty acclimating. There's recidivism, there's issues. And, uh, Mm -hmm. and so days like that, um, can be very difficult for me to maintain, uh, my own sense of optimism. Mm -hmm. So I find that. If I don't stop for the bottle of Coke and the slice of pizza after visiting the jail and actually just go back to work, have some water and some hot tea, um, until I calm down from whatever else has happened, uh, that makes a big difference in my own outcome and that I can help others better if I'm in a good place too. Yeah. Like I'm going back to work tomorrow after a nine day vacation. So it's not going to be, I'm I'm probably not going to be in my best first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, but, uh, I think that by the time that the day ends, I'll be back, uh, where I need to be. And, um, I, I take great pride in everything I do, my, my work there, my work for heart of a giant. Uh, and I want to be of service you now to everybody I encounter. And mm. I can't do that if I'm, uh, clutching my stomach because, you know, I ate too many of the wrong foods. Um, I was actually able to, uh, give up donuts for Lent this year. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> I was yeah, I was raised Catholic a long time ago, and so I had. I actually, was too. Okay, so yes. you know, uh, mm-hmm. I hadn't done the give up stuff for Lent in years. Yeah, uh, but it just so happened that uh, right around Ash Wednesday uh, was when I got my diagnosis of hypertension. So really? Have, yeah. So I didn't have okay. any. So I decided to give up donuts just for Lent, and then when Easter came along, I continued on that path. Now, I will say, uh, when I was in North Carolina, uh, near my hotel, there was a bakery and they made their own donuts. So I just decided that (laughs) Lent is over. And uh, I had had an apple fruit of the first morning, 
and a Boston cream donut my last morning. Uh, okay. Because the Boston cream donut, for those of you who don't know, is the official donut of the state of Massachusetts, which is uh, a piece of legislation that was passed by a state senator who was a friend of mine many years ago. So I felt the justified. Because every- an official donut is wild. Yeah. But- oh, yeah. yeah, we pass laws in Massachusetts. We have official everything. So I'll send you a list if you want. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the Boston cream donut is the official donut of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay. So I felt justified in having one, even though I was in North Carolina at the time. There you go. Um, but I'm not going to have any more donuts now. I'm home. I'm course, back at work. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I think it's important, uh, as we mentioned before the broadcast, that when you go on holiday, um, to not necessarily be so rigid as you would be the rest of the time. That doesn't mean you fall off the map and start, you know, having all sorts of bad foods. It just means that, um, you know, a donut and maybe a piece of pie, which I had in Connecticut on the way down, uh, cherry, by the way, um, you know, is okay. Uh, limiting okay. portions, not overdoing. And, uh, yeah, I still had my vegetables when I went out and I still made sure that, uh, I didn't have, you know, 17 meals a day. Um, mm-hmm. you know, when I stopped at, the um, uh, the barbecue restaurant with my son. I had ca- uh, catfish with lettuce and tomato and nice. some potato salad. Not optimal, but not the worst. Go back and have any ribs. They didn't have, you know, no hog right. fat, you know, that stuff. So um, you can maintain uh, a semblance of a healthy lifestyle while traveling. And, uh, <laughs> but you don't have to feel like you're punishing yourself or denying yourself that joy at the same time. Yeah. So I want to get that in. Um, yeah. because I think it's important that people don't feel like they're imprisoned, uh, yeah. by, their, by their diet, that it's actually something that is a positive and that it will make you feel better and you'll be living a happy life longer. This episode is brought to you by the Heart of a Giant Foundation. Thanks to the generous partners and our individual donors. Because that's what I wanted to ask you. Does it feel in general like the day to day, you know, now that your now that your lifestyle shifts are what they are? Does it feel like punishment and restriction most days or how does it register to you at the I, at this stage in yeah, the journey? At first it did. Uh, oh, yeah. it definitely. I'd say the first couple of weeks yeah. were pretty tough. Yeah, um, because there's a there's a Chinese restaurant that I drive by on my way home and I could feel them calling my name, you know, the first couple of weeks. <laughs> and, uh, but I haven't been in there. I can't remember the last time I was there. Yeah. And, um, as I said, the, the trick is to make small changes. So instead of Coca-Cola, I hope they're not a sponsor. Um, I've been, I've been drinking seltzer water, um, in plain water. Um, uh, instead of having sweet tea, I have unsweetened tea, mm-hmm. uh, that sort of thing. Instead of stopping for a slice of pizza, I keep some granola bars in the car with me. Mm -hmm. Um, These aren't punishments. They're just small Mm -hmm. changes that can actually make you feel better and extend your life. And And do you feel better? Yeah, I do. I do. And people remark that, um, you know, the, the, my, my face isn't as bloated and fat as it was before, which is nice to hear. Um, Mm -hmm. That they have noticed that even though my weight drop has not been as much as I'd want, that I look better. I noticed the belt loops tightening uh, on my belt. And um, I noticed that when I walk uphill, I can go further now. Awesome. Um, I'm not where I want to be yet, though. It's yeah, plus- but, you know, it's a, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's I'm, a I'm lifetime commitment, you know, so. Yes, I'm very blessed that I live about a mile from the Atlantic Ocean. And there's a beach down there. And I always made the excuse to not walk the path down there because there were too many people, right? Nobody goes there. It's too crowded. And, um, but I've started doing that again, which I had done years ago when I moved down here. And, Mm -hmm. um, so I find I can go a little further each time, which is nice. Um, I'm not to the point where I can walk back up the hill afterwards. So. I, I am, I will confess, uh, driving to the beach, even though I should be walking. Uh, <laughs> but when I get out of the car, I walk, you know, a mile back and forth and yeah. uh, try to get it back up to two miles. 
And then nice. when winter sets in and there's not so many people around, it'll be easier to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a touristy area where I live. And um, one of my mental health issues is not dealing with crowds all that great. So I try to stay away from that as much mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that um, I do feel better. Good. And I do feel more optimistic about my future than I did before. Because I don't feel like, well, what's the point? I'm just going to get old and fat and, you know, fall apart and die. And uh, I don't feel that way anymore. And so, now which place? And so the work we do with the Heart of a Giant, I think, is to try to target um, those folks. And again, not necessarily men, but that's what I'm familiar with. And, um, you know, the, the, it's, it's not too late. It's not hopeless. And you can make changes. And it doesn't mean that your life is going to be devoid of fun or right. anything. You know, all the all the lies we tell to ourselves to make bad decisions. Ah, uh, yeah, think that's really important. So when you mention mental health, if you can change your thinking, right, and you, and you come to realize that it's just not true, then you can get around to the point where you can say, "Okay, I can do this first. I think the other trick too, L, is is to not try to do everything at once. Absolutely. Some people, some people try to do everything the first day. I, I notice this with the, the people I serve at my other job. They'll uh, get released from jail and they'll want to do everything. They'll want to find a job, find an apartment, visit their girlfriend, visit their children all the first day. And then they have yeah. to, you know, get a doctor, get insurance, and, and they get overwhelmed. And so if you're starting to make a change for a healthy, hard lifestyle, I would suggest that you, you know, the first day you map out your diet and you make some of the small changes I mentioned as far as you know, lower calorie beverages, um, doing away with the processed sugar in the home. I mean, yeah, I, I don't even eat muffins anymore, which blows my mind because. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I would substitute muffins for donuts and, you know, occasionally I'll cheat with a scone because. Those are really good. Um, yeah. But it's just, uh, you know, I haven't had too many of those either. I'd say maybe once a month. Yeah. And when you get past that, it really helps. Now, my goal is to um, have a regular breakfast regimen of uh, fruit and yogurt and maybe oatmeal. Um, okay. But late, lately what I've been doing is, um, you know, maybe a banana or some strawberries in the morning with my coffee. Um, but I, I'm not saying to skip breakfast, but that's what I've been doing because that's not really good for you either, it's but not, it's, it's better than, you know, seven strips of bacon or something. Right. Um, that's right. But, uh, yeah. I mean, it's about finding a routine and a rhythm that works for you. Um, yeah. and I think that one thing that we try to really highlight to people is that a lot of your favorite foods are things that you can still eat, but maybe consider preparing them yourselves. Yep. With ingredients, you know, because then you can control the amount of sugar, the amount of salt, the amount of fat and so forth. Um, and there are ways that you get to still, like I say, eat your favorite foods, but without um, some of the negative outcomes, you know, that come from exactly. from getting the, the processed or the takeout or whatever version. So, yeah, we're definitely trying to get as many recipes and, you know, tips and suggestions up so that people have got ways and means to really implement this yeah, pretty easily. And I easily. know we've got some good folks at Heart of a Giant who do that stuff and have yeah. been very good at uh, posting those things. I will say that the one time I went to a Chinese restaurant this summer uh, because my son, uh, the writer, was uh, home from college and that's what he wanted. And so he's getting all the, the usual appetizers, you know, the, the picking ravioli and the crab rangoons. And uh, I actually got... Um, you know, chicken with vegetables and white rice. <laughs> nice. Okay. And I didn't feel like I was denying myself. I felt like, <laughs> you know, I'm still having the atmosphere with my son. That's the good thing. Absolutely. And, and I was still having, yeah. and there was more salt than I should be eating. But if you're going to wind up in a situation like that, just go for the healthier option yeah. and still enjoy yourself as opposed Definitely. to 
you know, having the full poo-poo platter and then feeling guilty afterwards, which is... Absolutely. And I think in general, just being conscious of what you're consuming. So as you say, if you know that on a particular, at a particular meal, you've had a lot of salt, you know, maybe for the next meal that day, make be cognizant and sort of cut down or increase your potassium intake for the day, get your bananas and your beets and, you know, this type of thing in so that you can try to balance it out. I think the more that we learn about how our bodies work and what they need, you know, to function optimally and that type of thing, um, is the better we can make decisions, um, yeah, on a, you know, just we, in the sort of day to day so that we're able to manage ourselves in a way yeah, that leads to thing better is, health. I mean, you know, older guys who are divorced or single like myself, um, mm. they'll always make the excuse that they don't want to just cook for themselves. Right. Uh, um, and so. But, you know, if you go to the market, uh, you know, they have the, the ready-made bags of salad. Um, yeah. You can eat that just fine. You can cook your own rice. It takes 10 minutes. You know, you don't have to be a gourmet chef. Um, and if you learn how to, you know, cook a chicken or a piece of fish, you're almost there. You know? Absolutely. You don't, have to, you, you don't have to be having, uh, you know, pasta and steak every night just because they're easy. Um, <laughs> it's not that. You shouldn't have them at all. You just have to make sure that you balance it a little more. That's the term balanced diet. Right? Definitely. Definitely for sure. And it doesn't so take too sure. much to get up in the morning and have a banana and a thing of yogurt instead of, you know, taking the time to fry bacon. So it's actually easier and less time yes. consumed. Yes. And once you start to make the mental connection between the, the pleasure of how good it feels to be consuming healthy food. Yep. versus the, because you'll notice over time, right, the way that your body feels after a heavy meal or after, a, even after a very salty meal or whatever, is not necessarily as nice as how you feel, you know, after right. a, a period of really looking after your health. It's quite satisfying to feel healthy. And I think that, um, you know, it gets to the point where you don't even really want the bacon anymore because you look at it and you're like, I don't like how I feel after I eat that. So so the banana becomes the choice. You know, it doesn't become the the punishment or the restriction or whatever. It actually then becomes the first choice. I'm a man who's been known to drive 90 miles out of my way to get, you know, a, a good roast beef sandwich. So <laughs> you just have to find other ways to... No, I'm, I'm totally serious. But there's uh, nothing wrong with that. You can still do. I mean, if it's a great sandwich, if it's a yeah. great drive, if it's, you know, there's all kinds of reasons yeah, well, why I mean, that might still be worth your time, you know. Well, people from my part of the universe, uh, they know that there's a, a, a deli in Connecticut halfway between Boston and New York ideal to stop with. And when I was <laughs> married, I had in-laws in New York City, so my wife and I at the time used to go there all the time. Yeah. So um, I popped in there the other night on my way back and I got some Bialis. I don't know if you enjoy them or not, but um, yeah, I made sure that I had them for when I got home because they're a healthier alternative to mm. having donuts and muffins in the house. <laughs> so that's what I'm having for breakfast this morning. Nice. And, um, and it was you know, 90 miles out of my way, but it was well worth it. And I got to talk to the wait staff about how I've been coming there since 1987 before they oh, were wow. all, all that kind of stuff. So. That's kind of neat. And, uh, and I do take great pleasure in, in traveling and meeting people and hearing their stories too. Yeah. And, um, and if I'm healthy and able to drive longer, yeah, I'll be able to do that. My, uh, my father is, um, turning 94 years old next month and he's still driving. Oh, wow. May or may not be a good thing, but, um, I'd love to be able to be, uh, functional and independent as long as he is. And that's mm. always going to be the goal. Um, well, it seems like know, genetically, you know, you obviously and, uh, you stand a good chance. So a while. let's let's just keep at it, and you know. yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. But uh, so it's it's a goal to shoot for, and um, he doesn't have the healthy habits that I do. Um, <laughs> no, uh, but the that's but ironic. It, well, it is, uh, but he grew up in a different time. You know, he grew yes. up during the depression, so yeah. it's one of those yeah. things. Um, but what I would recommend is that, um, people, um, 
get a blood pressure monitor like this at home. Yes. And weigh yourself consistently and uh, make sure you know where you stand and what your goals are. Talk to your doctor, respect their opinions. Uh, don't fight with them like I do with mine. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I'm being somewhat facetious, but um, I can be a, a hard sell on some of uh, these medical advice uh, situations. And I need to be better with that. And I recognize that. And then when you do um, want to go out and sort of cheat a little bit, just limit the damage would be my recommendation. And, uh, you know, like I said, have the catfish instead of the, the ribs. <laughs> the catfish have instead, the instead of the, of the donut. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about the blood pressure um, monitoring and measurement and so forth, because I agree with you. It's one of the most important things that you can do. You know, getting the little device um, is such a, it's such an important, um, I don't even want to say investment, but I suppose maybe that's the word. Um, because it allows you to really begin to understand your blood pressure, right? And the things that your body is um, responding to and the way that your, the way that, that your system fluctuates. Yes. Uh, even within a day, right? So when you have your own blood pressure monitor and you're able to just sort of take the readings regularly, I find that you really learn a lot about how better to monitor it. So what have you, what has been your experience and what would you say are some of your tips for people who sure. are trying to monitor theirs? Well, it's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, CVS Health for their grant to Heart of a Giant for making these yes. available. And um, we we do have some to give out to folks who participate in our program. Absolutely, um, I would say that the best thing is to use the monitor um, when you're relaxed, perhaps when you first get up in the morning, uh, before you had your coffee and you start revving too much. <laughs> yes, and um, you know, follow the directions very easy. I think we all know them. You can wrap it around your upper arm and uh, press the button, and it takes the reading automatically. And uh, you may want to take uh, multiple readings. I think three is the number that's recommended the most often. Yes, you're meant to take three and then yep. take the average. Exactly. And mm -hmm. then uh, make sure you record. I keep a notepad next to my monitor on my kitchen tape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just write down what the numbers are each day. And mm -hmm. that way you can sort of track where you are from day to day. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're in a stressful time, you're probably going to see the the number be high if you're having a, a tough morning, uh, you to fight with your ex or, you know, something like that. Not that that ever happens to me. And, um, you know, if something else is going uh, on in your life where you have to get to work and meet a deadline, that could be an issue too. So, um, try to take it, like I said, first thing in the morning. And then, uh, I weigh myself afterwards to see if there's any corollary between weight loss and where my blood pressure is that day. And um, I also try to make sure that I haven't uh, eaten anything that's going to make me feel, as you said, too full uh, prior to that, because um, that's just not good for you either right. way. Right. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, you know, there's the th you want to be seated in a comfortable position, feet on the ground, arm, you know, extended in front of you, etc. But we right. actually have a whole set of guidelines. The American Heart Association has put out a great tool and we do have it on our website. I can put up a link. So anybody who wants to get a recap of what Lewis just said um, and some of the other tips, we have a resource for that. So we'll definitely put the link up. It's like I say, one of the most important things that I think you can do to monitor your health Um is just take it your blood pressure really reading. Takes three minutes to do a reading. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, as long as you have it on tight enough and high enough up your arm, you'll get a fairly accurate reading. Absolutely. And, and you will notice, um, you know, fluctuations from day to day. Yeah. And it's so important because, you know, doctors themselves always talk about the white coat effect and, you know, that type of thing. You yes. see your doctor only so regularly. It's not enough for them to even get a clear picture of the pattern around your, your blood pressure, you know? So right. it's a useful tool if you're measuring your blood pressure and recording it as you are, 
that's actually a very useful um, uh, data set that you can take to your doctor you know, at your next That's visit right. and at your next checkup, because that gives them a sense. It, it helps them to understand how to adjust your medication, how to, you know, what recommendations you give. So I really cannot recommend it highly enough um, as a practice. And as we said, anyone who is in the Massachusetts or, you know, in the greater Boston area and you want help managing your blood pressure, please reach out. We have blood pressure monitors. We have... um you know, a team of, of, we have a care team, we have nursing staff, we have all sorts of people who... There's some tremendous people, yeah. Really, you know, and a whole community that really just wants to help yeah, all been, of us to get and stay healthy. Too, uh, in the area, so that can yes. be found on the website as well. Absolutely. Um, Lewis, this has been great. Is there anything else that you'd like to share or or touch on that we've maybe left out? Well, I would urge everybody um, to become more aware of and involved with Heart of a Giant, obviously, with all the services that we're providing uh, here in Massachusetts and beyond. Yes. And I would like to um, urge anyone who's watching this who is struggling with their weight and their blood pressure to not despair, uh, to not give up, and to not feel like it doesn't make a difference because it does. Absolutely. Yeah, um, it does. I think it's just absolutely essential to know that as long as you're maintaining a certain level of baseline health, that you can do better. It's just a matter of wanting to and having the desire to. And there are people out there like the Heart of a Giant team who are ready to help you. Absolutely. And you, you know, just to reiterate, the fact that it is not um, a death sentence, for want of a better way to put it. But, you know, any I too was diagnosed with high blood pressure some years ago, and I managed to get it under control. Thank God. Also, actually, much like you, Lewis, ironically, you know, doing work with the foundation <laughs> and realizing, oh, goodness, the supplies to me. <laughs> All these things sound like great ideas. Yeah, I know. You know, I think... What's been really so great about it is that feeling of, um, oh, wow, something actually can be done. You know, you can you can change your lifestyle in ways that really are manageable, that are not unpleasant, you know, that are sustainable. I think it's just a I'm really... I'm not telling people to eat carrot sticks 24 hours no. a day, you know what I mean? <laughs> Although it's I just... love carrot sticks. So <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I eat them too. But, you know, all things in moderation. And... Yeah. um but you don't have to, as you said, it's not a death sentence and it's no. not something that means that you're never going to have fun again. Oh, um, quite the opposite. Yeah. I mean, I, I learned when I gave up drinking that I can still sit in the bar and have fun. I'm just not getting drunk. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was, I was out at a bar with my son the other day watching sports, um, you know, eating good food and uh, having a great time. Yeah. And I didn't miss the fact that I was consuming Ooh. alcohol. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. same thing goes for um, fatty foods and um, some of those things that we probably should need for our hearts. Yep, definitely. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, it just comes back to it sounds so cliched, but it really isn't. It is about loving yourself. It's just about loving yourself enough to make the decisions that are actually better for you, you know. Yes. Um, and ultimately, that is. It's the complete opposite of a punishment. <laughs> you know what I mean? There, there couldn't be anything more affirming, I think, for anyone to do. So no, we you're really right. it's a demonstration mm -hmm. of uh, wanting to live and wanting to love. And yeah, that's what it's all Absolutely. about. Absolutely, isn't that what a heart is for? You know, <laughs> very good. Anyway, you, Lewis, it's been wonderful. Um, Thank you. We will do another one of these. This was a check-in, you know, because you're three months into the journey now, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is this is our check-in. We'll do another one in a few months' time so we can let everybody know, uh, you know, even more of the progress that Lewis has made. So definitely, you know, subscribe to our email list. We send out a newsletter every week. Once a month, there is a post from Lewis himself where he talks about his journey. Um 
We like to give tips and information about how you can take care of your heart. Um, and yeah, we are here as a resource, as a community, and as a source of support for anybody who wants to improve their health and just manage their hypertension if they have it, prevent it if they don't have it, and essentially just take good care of your heart. Elle, this has been a great experience. Thank you so much for hosting. Uh, it's been a real pleasure getting to know you these last several weeks. Uh, anyone out there paying attention, uh, heartofagiant.org is our website. You can check out um, my blog post there each month. And uh, I can be reached via email at lewishowthenumeral1 at gmail.com. And uh, I hope that you will all have a good, healthy day. Awesome. Thank you. All right.